So Denzel Mims was a second round draft pick by the New York Jets. He struggled to just get playing time for the Jets and has now requested a trade, which you can kind of understand. He wants to play for a team that will at least give him a shot somewhere. And then he followed that up with having a 100-yard day against the Giants. So was it an actual great performance by him, or was it he was going up against weaker competition, and that's how he was able to perform well? Well, let's talk about, I guess that'll be what we talk about in this video, solving that question. We're starting off with the play that you see on the screen. So this play, it's going to be a zone coverage play. And you see Denzel Mims' route is going to be running over the middle. You also have a play action. And these are the kind of routes that, you know, uh, I think the Jets are probably going to do a lot of this year. It's what they did a lot of last year. Just get guys going over the middle and with linebackers moving in. Quarterback can throw over the top of them, get a completion that way. And right when this play begins, I think Mims does a good job on this play. First off, notice how he ran straight up. He did not let anyone know what was happening right away. You know, play actions are built on deception a little bit, so you can't have your receiver giving away what you're doing right away. Sometimes you can, sometimes it doesn't matter. People aren't always paying the most attention to that. But still, you don't want a corner crashing in and taking away this route. Take the little extra time to make sure that you're, uh, you know, not making it clear what exactly you're doing. So then when he cuts in, he is able to get open. The safety comes by and makes a tackle, but you know he might have made a tackle and knocked the ball away earlier had Mims not done that little bit to set himself up. So maybe a little bit of both, you could argue here. Definitely lesser competition, maybe better competition reads this play quicker, but also Mims did a good job of just making it more difficult for them to read the play quicker. A play like this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup, so it's man coverage right here, and this is what you want to see receivers do, right? Can you win a one-on-one -on -one matchup? Right away, Mims is going to kind of get the inside leverage right here, and one thing that I have always felt about Mims is I don't think he's the best route runner. That's never been something that I've considered a massive skill from him. I think that there's things he does well. I don't know if uh, route running is typically the best thing. He kind of is someone where if he's running over the middle, he's going to get the inside leverage and then go over the middle. However, when he does go over the middle, he gets open enough that there's able to be a completion. So, you know, hey, uh, if you're quick enough to make it work, then you can make it work. There is the question, though, of, okay, if you're going up against Stephon Gilmore here, he's probably knocking the ball away. But, you know, you could say that about a lot of guys going up against a elite corner. I think just the question is, you know, how much does that work against an, uh, a great NFL quarterback or cornerback, excuse me, versus an okay NFL cornerback? And the question, you know, the answer to that is obviously the weaker competition you go up against, the more often these plays are going to work. A play like this I thought was interesting. So it's again going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. But watch how when it begins, you're going to see a, a lot of contact uh, right there. Uh, you know, cornerback definitely created a decent amount of contact. But I think Mims fought through it pretty well and is in a position where he is going to get open. The issue is just that this is going to be kind of a timing thing. Watch how this quarterback just kind of really airmails it there, ends up getting intercepted. It got called back due to a penalty, so hooray. But, uh, you know, it was a it was kind of a weird the timing thing. To me, what I liked about this play was the fact that he was able to fight through the contact and still get some separation there. So at the end of the day, if you're getting separation, good things are going to happen. That's what you want to see guys do. That's definitely more telling, I think, than uh, if you're actually making a catch because there are just so many other variables that go into if you're making a catch, including you know some things that are out of your control, like the throw being too far. He was just never going to be able to make that grab. But he definitely had some impressive plays. This one was one of them. It's going to be a man coverage play with a single safety deep uh, type situation. You have a tight end who's currently lined out as the receiver closest to the sideline, but he's not going to be running deep. He's just you know going to be running a few steps and then stopping and it's really going to be Mims who's going to take on that plus receiver role meaning the guy outside the numbers who's trying to get open as a safety won't be able to get over there in time but he can get deep down the field potentially get a touchdown on this play since you're at the 29 yard line these are the types of plays that kind of separate the good receivers from the great receivers the great ones can win in ways like this the good ones typically you know sometimes can but can't do it as often look at how right when this play begins you see how Mims is going to kind of again get the outside leverage a little bit but really just blow by the defensive back 
quarterback he's going up against. And that's the ideal situation is that he can use, you know, his speed to get past guys. He's someone who ran a 4-3 despite the fact that he's 6-3. So, you know, that's kind of the the greatness about Mims and something you hope you can tap into. And if he can do stuff like this, he can win. I mean, at the end of the day, speed kills. And if you're someone who's fast, you can definitely make it work. And as you see, he's able to haul in the grab and make the catch. So, you know, it was a, these are definitely good plays, I think. These aren't just necessarily going up against weaker competition, but of course, weaker competition that you're going up against, it's always going to make everyone look better than going up against starters. That obviously goes without saying. So how do I feel about Denzel Mims? It's actually an interesting question. Uh, he's kind of someone I hadn't really thought about in a while because I remember actually liking him out of the draft, but I've always maintained wide receivers of notoriously difficult position to evaluate. So just because I liked someone out of the draft does not mean I will, you know, hold on hope for them for years and years to come if they aren't able to be successful. But there is kind of this weird thing with, uh, you know, with Mims of it's not so much that he's been unsuccessful as he just struggled to get playing time in general. And he hasn't been used in proper situations that you think would be beneficial for him. And so I have a hard time kind of, uh, you know, holding it against him too much just simply because of the situation that he's been in and because of uh, I don't know if he's gotten a ton of playing time now. There's going to be an obvious counter to that. And the obvious counter is if he was better, he would get more playing time. This Jets organization seems to know what they're doing. Again, the you know the Jets maybe don't have the best history of knowing what they're doing, but it seems like the people they have, you know, in in power positions of power now know what they're doing. But uh, you know, so therefore, if they know what they're doing, why isn't Mims getting playing time? Probably because he's not earning the playing time. You can make that argument. I guess the the counter I would have to that counter argument that I'm making with myself, arguing with myself here, is that I think that all the time, smart people don't give good players enough playing time. That's just something that happens. I mean, we just saw it this past season where Kyle Shanahan wasn't giving Brandon Ayuk a ton of playing time. And when he did, Ayuk looked awesome, like we all thought he would. So that was like a weird thing that happened. That kind of stuff does happen. And even smart people will sometimes make that mistake for whatever reason. Maybe someone is better in a game than they are in practice, stuff like that. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's usually valid reasons, not just them being stupid, but still, it does happen. So is there the potential that Mims is good and being used wrong? There is that potential, and it probably is worth taking a flyer on him. How much draft capital would you give up? Probably not that much, though. Again, he had one good preseason game. I wouldn't go crazy about it. It's cool that he had the good preseason game, but... Uh, you know, I think I would probably trust the fact that it's been a couple years and he hasn't really shown much for me to say. I'm not sure I'm willing to, uh, you know, give too much for him. But would I take a flyer on him? Sure, I, I think I would. I, I think, you know, give it, if the price is right, I would be interested. And especially if you're one of these sort of teams that doesn't really have much going for you. If you're the Chicago Bears, what do you have to lose? Take Denzel Mims. He'll get playing time. See if it works out. If not, whatever. You know, if it's a late round pick, like that player was probably never going to amount to anything anyways. So... That's kind of how I view it. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.